and welcome. This is day two of the State of the Union in beautiful Florence at the European University Institute. This is the annual high-level conference on the reflection on the future of the European Union. And this time, this year, for this 10th edition, our main theme is Europe in a changing world. We have more than 150 speakers over these two days of conference to discuss this zooming in on eight topics. We're discussing geopolitics, global economy, public health, and so much more. And today's program is packed with sessions, with one-to-one -one conversations, and debates just as yesterday. Same way as yesterday, you can watch everything that's happening here via three streams. You've got to choose one, that's not easy. We have a really very interesting and packed program for you. If you're watching it on the official website, you can live stream that. You can also go on the event platform and use also the Q&A question there. And you can, of course, follow this conference on the social media. And you can use the hashtag SOU2021, because, of course, as we hear here from decision makers and politicians and academics. We also want to hear from you. What do you think and what you want to ask when it comes to Europe in a changing world? And now for the opening, it is my great pleasure to welcome here on stage and to give the floor to Professor Renaud Deus, the president of the European University Institute. Welcome to this second day of the State of the Union Conference. Yesterday's debate have covered a wide range of issues from geopolitics to trade, climate change, human rights, artificial intelligence, and so on. Two points already emerged from our discussions. The first is that the classical divide between foreign policy on the one hand and domestic issues on the other hand is uh, or now completely obsolete. In our world of interdependence, global and local politics are often closely interrelated. The second point to emerge from our discussion is a corollary of the first, namely the variety of actors that want to have a say on those issues is ever bigger. This is true within our societies at large, but it's also very true at the European level where it gives rise to an important governance problem. How should Europe's relationships to the world conducted? The problem is, uh, of course, uh, particularly acute in the European Union, uh, where power has been divided uh, very carefully between a, a large variety of institutional figures, which significantly hampers uh, the development of a strong foreign policy. Some of our interlocutors on the world scene, as you know, have not been shy in exploiting this weakness. Josep Borrell, the EU High Representative for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy, is perfectly poised to address this issue. He could not open our debate today as initially planned, but he will be with us around 1 p.m. live from Porto, where the European Council is about to meet. We are, of course, extremely grateful for his participation in this 10th anniversary edition of the State of the Union Conference, an event which he contributed to create during his time as president of the European University Institute. But in the meanwhile, I'm very pleased to give the floor to Dario Nardella, mayor of Florence and a long-time uh, participant in the organization of our event. Thank you and enjoy today's uh, discussions. Dear distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, on behalf of the city administration of Florence, I am particularly delighted and honored to convey to you my welcome on the occasion of the State of the Union 2021, the annual summit for high-level reflection on the European Union, organized by the European University Institute of Florence, which will be held from the 6th to the 8th of May 2021, making this city, like in the other editions, the center of Europe on Europe Day. 
This year, the, the State of the Union 2021 celebrates its 10th anniversary in a time when Europe is at a turning point after the pandemic caused by COVID-19. The social impacts of this crisis are evident in our cities. Besides the health concerns, many people have lost their jobs and we see the number of people seeking social assistance rising as well as increases in those seeking food aid and basic material needs. The COVID-19 pandemic has seen therefore cities step up as leaders on the front line of this crisis. We mayors have adopted immediate measures to save jobs, help local businesses and protect the most vulnerable people representing an integral part of the solution. The main challenges are in cities, but it's also true that here we can find the necessary expertise and experiences that are greatly useful to develop plans and strategies. That's why, in my opinion, cities should play a more effective role. Cities are also living laboratories of change in environmental policies and vision and in the promotion of culture and economic development. In a way, like never before, the future of Europe is in the hands of the mayors. Moreover, cities are essential partners in ensuring a fair, inclusive and sustainable recovery. Being home to over 75% of Europe's population, cities are the engines of Europe's economies and the closest level of government to Europe's people. That's why the path to a stronger social Europe by 2030 needs cities in the driving seat now more than ever to bring Europe closer to citizens, being local governments essential partners for turning European Union policies and ambitions into reality. As such, cities should be included directly and more effectively in European decision making. At the same time, we must work towards a good framework at the European level that can support our cities in the green and digital transition. This year will be crucial to make sure that European Union policies and programs match what we need in our cities and help us to take action locally. Not only as a mayor of Florence, but also as the president of Eurocities, I will do everything I can in order to bring our shared message to the EU decision makers at the highest level and to reinforce our influence on European developments, since being part of this network gives us the opportunity to share experience, learn from each other and make our voice be heard. We are facing great opportunities for a change in all aspects of our daily lives. We can come out of this crisis with new energies and I am convinced that the Recovery Fund must be an opportunity not only for growth but also for changing our social models along with those related with consumption and work. Without city, no digital green transition would be possible and both must be seen as an opportunity and a priority. Achieving the goals of greenhouse gas emission reduction by 2030 and climate neutrality by 2015 will be challenging for all. In this fight to mitigate global warming and adapt to climate change, many European cities are already paving the way and helping achieve climate goals set out in the European Green Deal. As mentioned before, Cities are also key actors in Europe's digital transition. As in many other aspects of our lives as citizens, digitalization is not fully within municipal government's competence, but it's certainly part of our public responsibility. Digitalization is increasingly shaping our quality of life and access to rights and opportunities. During Europe's various lockdowns, we have witnessed how access to the internet and having the skills to use digital services determines who can benefit from the digital transition. These are major challenges for cities.
and we need to address them by ensuring that all people not only have access to digital means, but also to the skills to make the most of it. It includes developing awareness and the training expertise for our citizens in order to make teaching of digital skills a basic course in the national education programs. We must join forces to deliver our goals towards a fair, inclusive and sustainable recovery, leaving no one behind. Dear friends, I would like to express my warmest thanks to you all for your attention and to wish you a productive time along with the most successful outcomes on the occasion of this annual and remarkable appointment of the State of the Union 2021. Thank you very much.